Hi everybody from the Vice Royal Alexandria car in Tatamagush, Nova Scotia. So this is an old school train lounge car and I want to tell a story from a much newer version that happened about seven years ago when I was taking a trip across Canada and I didn't want to talk to anybody on this trip. I was having kind of a low time so I disappeared to the lounge car during dinner figuring it would mostly be empty and it was and I'm reading away happy to not be bothered by anybody and then about five minutes after I start reading, this little girl comes in to the car with her arms outstretched. She does three laps of the car and then disappears. And this happens two or three more times. And I realize she's just running up and down the train doing laps. And finally she comes and she sits in the seat right next to me. And I've never been super comfortable talking to children. I'm always afraid that I'm going to mess them up because when you're in the education world, you see how adults mess up kids all the time. And she's sitting on the chair and she's swinging her legs and she looks up and she says, Hi, I'm Allison. And I kind of looked at her quickly and said, Hi, Allison, I'm Drew. And uh, she says, What are you reading? And I said, Oh, it's just a book for work. And her eyes get really big and she goes, You get to read books for work? My dad has to go to an office. Which is one of those cool moments where you realize that your job is really cool. And she looks at me and says, Well, what's the story? And I look down at this academic tone in my hands and I say, Well, this book doesn't really have a story. And she looks at me sort of quizzically and says, well, don't all books have stories? And I said, well, no, some just have knowledge. And she says, well, aren't stories knowledge? And this is the part where I didn't want to mess her up, right? Because I, I don't want her going out there into the world thinking that stories aren't knowledge. So I said, yes, as a matter of fact, one of my friends once told me that the story is the basic unit of human understanding. And as soon as it comes out of my mouth, I'm like, she's seven. But she looks at me and she says, I think your friend is very smart. And I was like, oh, I really like this little girl. So I said, well, can I ask you, why are you running laps up and down the train? And she says, oh, this happens all the time. And I go, what do you mean? She goes, my parents are always telling me that my spirit is too big for most of the rooms that I'm in. And you know how a train is kind of like a big, long hallway? I was like, oh, I guess so. I never thought of it that way. She goes, well, I think that if my spirit's too big for all the rooms I'm in, it's definitely too big for hallways. But I think anytime I'm stuck somewhere that's not big enough for me, I run. Because if you run, you always remind yourself that you're free. And I was like, that's such a cool way of looking at it. It was kind of like this really inspiring thing. Because kids can say it without sounding pretentious or like they're trying to sound smart. And I said, I run to remind myself that I'm free. And I'm like, you know, Allison, that was a really cool like thing. And it just kind of made me feel good. Because I think that's the problem right now is I think maybe I'm spending too, many, too much time in rooms that aren't big enough for me, for my spirit. And she goes, she hops off the chair and she looks at me and goes, Drew, I do not mean to be rude. But I don't think anyone whose spirit is too big for hallways would ever read a book without a good story. And then she runs back off the train. And I do not know if you've ever been schooled by a seven-year-old. But I realize now when I look back that there, I don't know the key to happiness, but I think one of the keys to unhappiness is when a gap forms between how you conceive of yourself and how you are actually behaving and you become aware of that gap. And I'm supposed to be someone who travels around and collects and shares stories. And I was spending two weeks of my life and I wasn't writing any new part of my story and I wasn't listening to anyone else's. And I always really kind of liked that moment where I got reminded by a seven-year-old that Anytime you can start to detect a gap occurring between how you conceive of yourself and how you're actually behaving, that's something that you either have to change how you conceive yourself or change how you're behaving and make sure that sad unhappiness is always living in that particular gap. So I figured when we saw this really cool old school train lounge, this would be a good opportunity to share that. So we'll see you again on the Day One Leadership Vlog.